Spahn. He could be dangerous. Let's try to get a hold. And he is shit off my clan. Start! Start! Chef of my clan.
You had a narrow squeak last night. Another day in bed wouldn't hurt you none. Who's in charge here? Mr. Chris Hale's in charge. He left me here to watch out for you. Uh, where do I find him? There's Mr. Hale and Hawks right over there, in the second wagon. Better take it easy, though. Well, Stevens better replace those bad ones. That wheel's gonna collapse on him. I guess you better check the rest of the wagons, Bill. All right, Chris. Mr. Hale? Well, this is a little soon for you to be up, isn't it? A fever can strike again, you know. No trouble about me. I'm good enough. But there are ten people out there going to die if they don't get water today. Ten people? How far? I don't know. I started out the night before last, and when my horse gave out, I walked for a day and a night till you found me. I could be a whole day by wagon, maybe even more. Coop! You think you could tell him where to find him? I'll take them where they are. Get him a horse, Coop. Fill up every canteen with water you can pack. Go along with him, see if you can locate his outfit. Right, Chris. The rest of us will catch up with you when we can. There's uh, not much left of your clothes and your boots, but they're over there in my wagon if you want them. No, but I'll return these as soon as possible. There are your personal effects. My name is Brian Conlon. I know. I took the liberty of finding out your name. And the fact that I'm an immigrant. And these are my immigration papers. Did you find that out too, Mr. Hale? Yes, that too. You know, over 50% of this wagon train are immigrants. How many are Irish? How much for the water and the horse and the guide? I hadn't thought about a price. The important thing right now is to get to those people. They're off the main trail, Chris. I'll ride back and tell you. All right. He didn't act one speck grateful for what we'd done for him, did he, Mr. Chris? Not one little speck. <laughs> well, maybe he has good cause. Haven't you got anything better to do than to stand around here and waggle your tongue? Must be the heat. Horses need a breather. Ooh, a couple of swallows wouldn't hurt you none either. As others need it more than I do. Where was your outfit headed? No special place. You finished. This is where I left them. I must have given you up and decided to go on. 
Well, they was all done in. Then they can't be too far. Let's go. them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Is that you, lad? It is you. It's really you. Why, I didn't think you'd... I had to keep going, lad. I couldn't just sit there and wait for us all to die. It's time enough to talk later. Here. Irish whiskey never tasted better. I knew you'd come back. I just knew it. Then you know more than I did. Yeah, you drink and I'll see to the children. They're being taken care of. Who is he? He's part of the wagon train a few hours from here. A wagon train? Oh, then it's going to be all right. They'll help us? I imagine they will. A price? Oh, now, Brian, you can't put a price on ten lives. Be grateful. Please, Brian. Oh, that's enough for now, honey. You can have some more later. My name's Coop. What's yours? Jody O'Mara, but everybody calls me Joe. Well, Joe, pretty soon you'll have all the food and water you want. Maybe we can get Charlie Wooster to rustle us up some candy. Would you like that? We don't want any candy, thank you. We're all grateful to you. Well, I was beginning to wonder. I'm glad we could be of help, uh, Miss... Dana Bannon. My name's Cooper Smith. It is Miss, isn't it? Yes. Though I trust not forever. Well, I'm sure that's one thing you won't have to worry about. You mind telling me what made you folks think you could cross this country with equipment like this? We were told that we could. Well, whoever told you was a flat-out liar. We thought the same. But even so, it wouldn't have made any difference. We'd have tried anyway. Now, if you'll excuse me. ahead they are. Well, we'll find out when we catch up with them. If you ask me, I'm not too anxious to catch up with them. Why do you say that? 
Well, if the rest of them are like that Conlon fella, it'd be like jumping into a bed of prickly cactus pears. Well, you and trouble aren't strangers, Charlie. What's the difference about this? Bill, there's all kinds of trouble, big and little kinds. The kinds you can handle, the kinds you walk away from. What kind of trouble do you think we're going to run into up ahead? My bones tell me it's the big running away from kind of trouble. Your bones didn't do very well with the ghost, so you may be wrong again. Now, let's start a move, Bill. <laughs> You proved me wrong this time, and I sure won't be aggravated at all. There's Coop. Hello! Camp just over the rise, Chris. Any fever? No, no sickness. Just wore down mostly. The folks, the stock, the wagons, everything. All right, I'll go right on ahead with Coop, Bill. You circle up the wagons as close to their outfit as you can get. any sooner when we pushed it as hard as we could. Mind if I step down? You have that right. Mr. Bannon, this is Chris Hale. Mr. Bannon runs this outfit, Chris. We're in need of equipment to repair our wagon and enough supplies to see us on our way. Can we buy them from you? Well, I think we can work something out. Where are you folks headed? Tappet Springs. Well, if the weather holds, you should be able to make it in about a week. All we'll need is enough to get us there. We can spare that much. Our wagons are going to Tappet Springs. Why don't you join on with us? And if we did, would we have to pay for it? Every wagon we take across the country pays a fee. And it's worth it for the protection you get. We'll take care of our own. Just the equipment and supplies. Whatever you say. I'll go and make a list of the things we need. What about your uh, wagons? Looks like you could use some help to get them in shape. How long would it take? Well, the uh, wagon train will be here before too long. I'll put some men right on it. If we do it alone, it'll take three or four days. All right. But only enough men to do the job. Don't go loading on any extras. All right, let's get to work, all of us. I don't get it, Chris. I don't get it at all. We saved their hides, offered a help, and for all the thanks we get, you think we came here to cheat and rob them blind? Well, maybe that's what they do think. What do you mean? Does the word Nina have any special meaning to you, Coop? No, just that it's a girl's name. Yes, it is that. When I was back east, I saw it used differently. It was in the want ad sections of all the newspapers, in the employment offices all over the city. It was even in the public schools for children. What does it mean, Chris? No Irish need apply. N-I-N-A. These people have been turned away from decent jobs. They've been lied to. They've been cheated and cursed wherever they went. Is it any wonder they feel the way they do? No, I guess not. I've heard some about how they've been treated, but I never saw it close up. Well, I have, Coop, and it's ugly. Even more ugly when you're on the receiving end. They've had a stomach full of prejudice, and they're running away from it as far as they can get. But they take hatred and bitterness with them. I reckon anybody would if they were kicked around enough. I know I would. There must be something we can do for these people to make up for the way they've been treated. Well, we'll see what we can do. 
But like with most things, important things, in the end, you have to help yourself. Now, let's give him a hand. One more will do her, Coop. You know, one more mile and these wheels would have froze tight to the axles from the friction heat. Tell all grease is one thing the wagon train shouldn't come out here short on. You would get yourself killed. The benevolent gentleman who sold us the wagon swore that we had more than enough, and at the prices he charged, I believed him. If I were you when I ever meet him again, I'd wrap this wheel right around his head. I like that fine. There are too many of him and too few wheels. Oh, hi. Well, just slap some of this tallow on these wheels and they'll roll nice and easy. Think you're going downhill all the way. All I want to do is be away from this forsaken place. Never seen so many unfriendly people all bunched together as this outfit. What happened? You tried to nestle up to her and she cut you off? I did not. I just acted like a gentleman, that's all. The way you're smelling like this tallow grease, she probably thought you were some old rank steer. But I'll, uh, I'll tell her different. Old rank steer. <laughs> well, well, little ones. Who are you hiding from? My name's Charlie Wooster. What name do you go by? Now, come, come, come. Everybody's got a name. Everybody knows that. Even my old horse has got a name. I call him old Mopalong. Because that's all he does, just mope along. <laughs> well, I guess names aren't very important anyway. How would you like to help me carry these sugar sacks over to your wagon? <laughs> i tell you what I'll do. I'll pay you for it. For every sugar sack you carry, I'll give you a peppermint stick. <laughs> and I'll pay you in advance, too. Now, ain't that fair? <laughs> well, you better make up your mind before I go change mine. I have a name. Oh, good. <laughs> it's Jody O'Mara. Jody. I have a name. It's Sarah Hendrahan. Fine. Sarah and Jody, huh? I'll get the candy. I'll be right back. <laughs> Here you go. We don't accept charity. Well, now, I don't exactly call this charity. You see, you're earning the candy. Totting one little sugar sack isn't my idea of earning it. Oh, you really want to earn it, huh? If it's honest work. Honest work. <laughs> Do you call grooming a team of horses honest work? We do that for my father. Fine, you do it for me and I'll give you two peppermint sticks. One for each horse. Doesn't that sound fair? <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We'll take it after we've done the work. And only if you're satisfied with what we've done. Well, fine, that sounds like a nice business arrangement. Come on, we'll go get the tools. <laughs> Come on, I'll take the candy. <laughs> I have a list here of the supplies we bought. Now, would you look it over and see if it's correct? Well, looks about right. How much? Well, Mr. Bannon, the folks on the wagon train got together and decided they'd like to give you these supplies as a kind of courtesy of the trail. You mean they want to do us a favor, is that it? Might say that. Mr. Hale, understand this. We accept favors only from them we call friends. Now, how much do we owe you? Well, about $30 should do it. $30. And the labor for your men? About $10 more. There you are. That, that wipes the slate clean. We're all even up. All even up, Mr. Bannon. Oh, now, uh, would you just receipt that for me, please? Thank you. Well, out of a 
to do it. I'll leave you some extra wagon spokes. They might come in handy. Anything else you need, you better let me know before morning. We have everything. Good luck. Same to you. Two words most of us have forgotten how to say. But I want to say them to you now. Thank you. There's no need for thanks. Oh, but you're wrong. There's every need. Look, uh, we're having a little get-together over at our camp tonight. Uh, it's a birthday party. Why don't you and the rest of the folks come over and join us? Will it be singing and dancing? All you can handle. What do you say? I think not. We've had a long day. We'll need all the rest we can get. A moment. I... I wasn't always the man you see now. And I take no pride in what I become. When they drive a man to the wall, when they won't give him a chance, when they won't let him pick himself up out of the muck, he changes. And he fights back any way he can. Look, uh, I know some about how you folks been treated. Do you? Do you really now? Well, I'm a construction engineer. Back east, they're crying for them to build their cities. I could have helped them do that. Do you know what they allowed me to do? They put a 20-pound sledgehammer in my hand and turned me out in the slaughter pens in the stockyards. I wasn't good enough to build their cities. I was fit only to butcher their beef. And John Bannon, he's a fine doctor. Him they put down in the sewer. And it was that or nothing. And Dana, how are they permitted to sweat over a kitchen sink in a dirty slop house? Every dirty, rotten, stinking job that nobody else would take, they give to us. And they said we should be grateful for the chance. If I hadn't gotten away from there, I would have killed with my bare hands. That's all over with now. Why don't you forget about it? It's jammed too deep in my throat for me to spit it out and forget it. Sure it is. And you live with it every day. But tell me this, does it make you feel any better for it? Dancing, a little laughter. What harm would it do? Not the time for laughing and dancing. When will the time be? What's happened to us, Brian? To you and me? I look at you and I see almost a stranger. You're not the man I gave my heart to, the man I want to marry. I'm not the same man that I know. And I doubt if I'll ever be the same man again. My love for you, that hasn't changed, woman. And it never will. Then don't destroy it. And don't destroy what we can find here, what we can all find. If we'll only learn to accept and believe that things can be different. Please try, Brian. Please. more work to do before we pull out? Nothing I can think of. How's your horse, Michael? How's his leg? Oh, it, it's better. Their cook, Charlie Worcester, gave me some liniment. Seems to be doing a job.
You know, Sean, I've been thinking we've come through some long, hard weeks, and I'm sure we have some trying days ahead of us. I, I think perhaps if we eased up for one night, it'd do us all some good. And what type of easing up did you have in mind? Well, they invited us to their party. I feel we should go. Oh, you do? I suppose you feel they'll accept you, that you eat at their table, dance with their women. You feel that, do you? I do. Then you're a blind, stupid fool, and I've no patience with you. I may be what you say, but I have a right to my opinion and a right to express it. That you have, and now you've expressed it, the answer is no, so forget it. Sean, I've not gone against your leadership, and I don't do now, but I think in this, that everyone has a right to decide for himself. I'm going to the party. Well, like I said, he invited all of us. Brian. It isn't proper for a lady to go to a party on escort. Girls, I forbid you to go over there. I'm not a girl, father. I'm a woman grown. And I'll decide for myself where I'm going. You'll never learn, will you? You have to go back for more. We're all right. Go ahead, all of you. Go and get your noses rubbed in the mud again. And this time, learn the lesson good. Once and for all, learn you're nothing but a lot of Irish mix, and you don't fit in. We don't belong, and we never will. You hear me? We never will! Too many things jumping around my head. Why not let one of them jump onto your tongue? Let's hear it. Yeah, let's them folks over there. I never saw such an ornery outfit in my life. You've seen ornery people before. Yeah, but not all in one bunch like they are. Anyway, it's not the grown-ups I'm worrying about. It's their young ones. Right now, they're a fine bunch of youngsters. If they grew up around all this misery and hatred, some of us gonna rub off on them. They'll be just like their folks. And that ain't right, Mr. Brisson. It ain't right at all. Yeah, well, how do you know what the folks are like, Charlie? You never took the time to know them. They never gave me a chance at all, and I tried, too. Maybe you didn't try hard enough. Maybe we all didn't try hard enough. Well, we did try. But you don't settle things like this in a day, you know. You can't push too hard. You gotta give it time. First, the way I see it, those folks got the wrong end of the stick in this country. Well, I'm part of this country. I figure I had a hand on that stick. Now, you want to tell me I'm wrong? Well, you're wrong about one thing. You said they wouldn't be here. We, uh, decided to accept your invitation. That is, if it's still open. Ladies and gentlemen, we're glad you can make it tonight. Uh, well, what's the matter with the music there, Luke? You break your fiddle? Well, the food's right over there on the table. Drinking buckets there, so come right on over and dig in. Don't be bashful. Come on. Having a good time? Oh, the best I've had in ages. Well, are you brave for another dance? Maybe later. Right now, I'd like to cool off a little. Is it permissible to go for a walk outside the encampment? I just made it permissible. Have you pulling out in the morning? Oh, no. Animals need another day's rest. So do we. It's a good trail between here and Tappet Springs. You shouldn't have any trouble. I wanted to ask you about that. This Tappet Springs, what's it like? Oh, that's good country around there. It's fertile, green. Man can build their family and home. Whole new way of life. Will he let us? Not here. 
people don't trouble themselves with the way a man dresses, the way he talks, even the way he thinks. They worry about more important things. How to stay alive, for instance. Uh, all they ask is that you pull your fair share of the load. You do that and you find what you're looking for out here. are so lovely. They can change real fast. I know. I suppose you know all the good and bad about this part of the country. Well, just about. How do you feel about it? This land? There's no place else I'd rather be. That must be a comforting feeling to belong. But, uh, what made you folks decide to leave Ireland? Leave somewhere where we belonged? Have you heard much about the potato famine in Ireland? I've heard some about it. They say it's real bad. Thousands have died from starvation. Thousands more will before it's over. We had to leave or die ourselves. What about you? Nothing much to tell. Just a man doing his job the best he knows how. Is there a girl waiting? Yeah, I reckon there is somewhere. I haven't found her yet. And you're so. I used to think there was. Now I don't know. Well, when you get squared away and settle down, things will work themselves out. I suppose so. I guess we better start back. We don't want the folks to start talking. Somehow, that doesn't seem to matter very much right now. To our wagon. It's not what you think, Father. It's not what you think at all. I said get back to our wagon. Mr. Bell, you've got no right. <clears throat> Always it's the same. The way you treat our women. Because he's Irish, he's not entitled to the decency and respect you show other women. He's merely a thing. A thing for you to amuse yourself with for an hour. That's or two. not true. You got it all wrong. Stop <laughs> it! wouldn't listen. You had to learn for yourself. Well, are you satisfied now? Oh, no! Stop it! I don't know what's happened out here, but no more is going to be done about it tonight. So get back to your wagon. Be time enough to talk about it tomorrow. There'll be no talking tomorrow or any other time. You keep away from us or they'll be killing. Did you tell him all about it? He didn't have to. I have eyes. Yes, you have eyes, but they only saw what your unreasoning, unthinking mind wanted them to see. They saw all they needed to. Tell him, Father. You tell him how my dress got torn. Tell him or I'll scream it to the heavens.
Well, I... I, I tore it when I pulled her away from him. But I saw them together, close together. That I saw. Yes, we were close. And he kissed me. Because I wanted him to. You wouldn't. One kiss, that's all it was. That's all it would have been. It hadn't have been for you. And now you'll have things the way you want them, Father. The way they've always been. No matter where we go, it's always the same. We'll be all by ourselves again. And I suppose that'll make you happy. Conlon! Come on out here, Conlon. He might have a gun. He has that right. Mister, you got a piece of my hide tonight and you walked away without a mark. How about trying it again, just you and me? Are you challenging me as an equal? As an equal? Mister, I never thought of you as anything but. All I want to do is find out how many times I can knock you down. Well, that's fair enough. Now, how do we play it? Why don't we make them up as we go along? No fear, lass. Brian will stop it all in good time. <laughs> Let us all be fair and square. Give the man a chance to get on his feet.
ready. Yeah. Wasn't ready. He is now. He wasn't ready either. Got a heavy punch. I feel like a wagon run over me. Must be the same one that backed over me. <laughs> well, I've I've had it if you have. I'm tired too. Coop. You know about what happened. Forget it. We just buried it. <laughs> 